All right, welcome back. Uh, in the last video, we talked about how we can draw out causal diagrams by thinking about what are the variables that need to be in this system uh, and how we can simplify that list. And then finally, how we can draw arrows of one variable to another. In this video, what I'm going to be talking about is how to use the website Daggety. Uh, Daggety is a website that will help you draw causal diagrams, makes things a little bit easier for you. All the little arrows and stuff uh, fit in really well. So. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to go to daggety.net and we're going to click to launch daggety in our browser. This is going to take us to the actual system itself. So what we have here, we have our variables. So here's a variable A, for example. We have uh, some variables here uh, with arrows between them, right? We have an arrow from A going to Z, from B going to Z, and so on. What else do we have? Over here on the left, we have a bunch of options about how we can draw the variables and also a little legend telling us about the color here. So this tells us, for example, that variable with the little play button on it, that's our exposure or treatment variable. Uh, we have a variable with a little eye on it, that is our outcome variable. We have green variables, we have blue variables. That, you don't have to worry too much about this stuff. One thing you will notice is that some of the times we will get colors on our variables. And what this tells us is that we the red variable that's standing in the way of our identification. We might want to control for that. We'll get to that later. We also have grayed out variables. These are what we would think of as unobserved uh, variables, typically where we we know that they're important to our system but we can't actually measure them and these there's actually a lot of these kinds of variables in social science uh, so for example if you're interested in the effect of education on earnings as we talked about before one thing that would affect both education and earnings is let's say your stick to itiveness right and your grit and a lot of times in our data we don't have that measure uh, sometimes we can't possibly have that measure. It's something that might be unmeasurable. And so it might be important, but we can't measure it. It still goes on the causal diagram. So let's figure out how we can make our own causal diagram. I'm going to go for new model. In model, new model, it's going to ask me for what my name of my exposure variable is. I'm going to call that X. And the outcome variable, I'm going to call that Y. And it's going to start out with an arrow from X to Y. Because pretty much if we didn't think there was an arrow there, what would be the point of God in the causal diagram in most cases? Although some, sometimes you don't want it. So how can we add new variables to this? We just have to double click on the blank space. We can add a new variable, let's say W. Uh, we can draw arrows from one variable to another by double clicking on the source variable and then also double clicking on the target variable. Um, do that for both X and for Y here. And as you can see that automatically turned W red, telling us that that is going to be a problem for our causal identification, uh, that we might want to control for that in some way. So that's something to look out for. We also, uh, this also tells us a couple things. So first of all, we look over here on the right, we get a couple of important pieces of information. So for example, this tells us that if we want to identify the effect of X on Y, we need to control or adjust for W. Uh, and again, we'll be getting to that, what that actually means later, but this is telling us the list of what we're gonna be interested in. There's some other stuff up here as well. We're not gonna be doing direct effects a whole lot in our class, but sometimes, for example, uh, X might have an effect through some other variable. Let's say we have Z here. X causes Z and Z causes Y. Well, you know, that's part of the effect of X on Y, but maybe we don't want that. We, so the direct effect would not include this. We can also look for instrumental variables, which we'll talk about much later. Also over here on the right, we have what are called the testable implications of the model. When you draw a causal diagram, it doesn't just tell you how you can identify the effect of X on Y. It also tells you some other things that your model implies. So for example, you'll notice here that the only way to get from W to Z is going through X. So what does that tell us? That tells us that if we adjust for X, if we held X constant, controlled for it, there should not be a relationship between W and Z because we got that we already got rid of the only way you can get there. And so if we controlled for X and we still found a relationship between W and Z, that would tell us that our model might be wrong. Uh, so that's something to think about as you're putting these models together. Let's get back to working with Daggett. We can add a bunch of variables. We can draw arrows between them. There's other stuff that we can do. If you hold the control button and then you drag an arrow around, you can make it curvy, which might help if you have a really complex uh, variable. You can also drive the variable around itself and it will move similarly. We can also do lots of stuff. We can make a variable unobserved, uh, meaning that it's not going to try to tell us to control for it by hitting U, hovering over a variable and hitting U. So now you can notice before it said, hey, you want to get the effect of X on Y, you got to control for W. Well, if I say, well, hold on, I don't actually know where W is. I can't measure it. It's going to stop trying to tell you to do that. So that's what the U is going to do. And so we can also, for example, delete variables with D. That will help us delete variables. And there's actually a whole bunch of other stuff that we can do up here. We can rename variables and uh, this will tell us how to do that. So we just hover over it and hit R. So it's got all the information we need. We, instead of we want to say R, we want this to be doctor's visit. 
So now it says doctor's visit. We can delete connections as well, right? We just uh, double click. We do the same way that we created a very uh, connection. We can get rid of the connection. Maybe we only think that X affects Y through Z. And that's the basics of it. Uh, that's how we can use Daggety to create a causal diagram. We can also use Daggety for it to tell us how to solve that causal diagram. It can tell us what we need to adjust for, which we'll get more into in the next video. All right, that's it. Hopefully uh, you can play around with this some, try to write down some models uh, that you might be interested in, uh, do a little bit of practice on creating some causal diagrams. Thank you.